is Geeks Gone Raw, and we have revamped the podcast to be an all-inclusive show rather than a podcast network. As you guys know, probably that it's it's always been like kind of a Discord is like the Geeks Gone Raw, and then I, I think back in the day, Scarfinger had other shows that was under Geeks Gone Raw. But since we're kind of want um, we kind of winded down on Scarcasm for 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 the time being. We kind of get back to basics, you know. To yeah, and that's that's where the gets going raw kind of comes into play. And if you guys all know, I, I mean, I've said it in the Discord some, but like if the people that's listening don't know yet, it's kind of an open door policy for people that's been on the podcast before. And if you haven't been on the podcast before, because we're always like looking for guests and stuff, you know, and because right. it's always a fun time to have people that's not been on the podcast before and just to. Uh, hang out with friends and do the whole thing but it's it's a it's a role in the discord called guest fam and pretty much if you have that privilege you can just jump in the podcast and it doesn't really um you don't there's no a lot of people think oh man i don't know if i have time you know it don't really matter about time because you can just jump in just say a couple things if you want to chime in on a topic and then jump out that's that's totally cool you know like i kind of wanted to try something different than just the we're going to record for two hours and everybody's got to be there for that two hours it doesn't really have to be that way i mean we will be here for you know the the duration of the show but i mean you don't really have to and that goes for scarfinger too because i know that's one of the main things is just scheduling out things and committing to things is harder than just you know hanging out yeah right 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 and Sorry, go ahead, Chase. Go no, ahead, Chase. And it's it, we're also going to try to um, get away from the live format because um, for the most part, if someone did show up in the live channel, it was either Blue or Scott. And, you know, now they can just be part of the show rather than have to text. <laughs> have to text, yeah. In the chat. Yeah, because I, yeah, <laughs> I always spend half my time texting, man, and be like, man, they're going to another subject and I'm still typing. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. So no, it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, we kind of wanted to kind of wrap this in as a um, uh, bring it back as a podcast in its own right and uh, make it more of a uh, a family, um, a GGR fam type of event uh, each time we sit down and record. So um, on some of the evenings, like right now, um, we're, we we're all kind of behind the scenes sauce, you know, uh, shooting on a Tuesday evening, uh, kind of doing this on a Tuesday evening. Um, that seems to t- be the time to work for Chase and I, but Scar is generally unavailable on those Tuesdays. However, um, if it's sometimes he can't make it and he feels like showing up, he will. Um, but, and, sure, uh, and if Scar really has something to say, you know, I mean, we um, will definitely do a Thursday or something. But, you know, that's yeah, it sure. has to be scheduled out. And that's really yeah. a message to Scar. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, but also... Um, uh, I mean, I'll let him know, but uh, these first few episodes will be on the Scarfinger or Scarfinger, the Scarcasm feed, mm-hmm. bef- and, as well as the new GGR feed. Just so you know, we can get some of the um, listeners that are still subscribed to the Scarcasm feed to okay. know about the new feed. And the Scarcasm feed is not going away. Scarfinger is going to do, like you said bef- on the last episode, that. Um, He's going to want to do some more short form type of things that aren't really conducive to an entire podcast. So that feed's not going away. It's just um, right as a podcast format, it's going to be on the new GGR uh, Spotify feed. Right. So um, look at just be more flexible, provide different content. Uh, Scar wants to provide a different type of content and um, we'll absolutely try to give him the flexibility to do so. And this is a this is a different type of content as well. Uh, not. Not extremely different, but just more of a resurrected type of content. So, yeah, looking forward to it, man. So, uh, y'all know I'm Larry, a.k.a. Blue Man Rule. So, we just here, <laughs> ready to get this thing rolling. So, um, well, that's it, though. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, there's no um, complete uh, theme to the show. You know, it's mostly mm-hmm. still just hanging out and, and doing the thing. But, um, I, I mean, it's still, I mean, as gamers, we're still going to be talking about a lot of games. But it's, you know... We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff on this show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure, man. So, um, 
You want to just jump right in, Chase? You want to yeah. you want to you want to catch people up about what's been going on with you or whatever? Yeah, whatever. Man. However you want to make it fly, man. I mean, it's been it's been a minute, so like I have definitely been finishing a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. that's what I've been up on too. Because I have, um, I I mean, I've said it before on the podcast, but the the Steam Deck has really helped the backlog. Like, if the mm-hmm. backlog draft was a thing with the Steam Deck, now the Steam Deck's out, man, I'd be, like, <laughs> getting all kinds of points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause you, For sure, man. I mean, you don't realize how, how many games you can get through by having that opportunity to play for 30 minutes at a time every day on a lunch break or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Now, so you know what's funny is... um. Like I told you before, man, like the only handheld I ever owned was a PSP and uh-huh. Assassin's Creed specific model PSP thing was nice, man. Um, but, you know, with this, what is it, the Sony portable or whatever, like or the Sony PlayStation Q, like that little handheld thing that they have, man. I just I just heard the I just heard today that if you have Wi-Fi where you are and you have Wi-Fi at home, you can actually log in and play and not have to be on the same network at home. You can be somewhere else. But I don't I don't I don't know if that's true. But I'm thinking you know you're just using Wi Fi, right? You're just using internet connection connectivity, you're streaming from your PlayStation Five. But I'm like, man, that would be pretty stinking tweet. Right. That would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It just um <laughs> That, that little thing just looks ugly, though. <laughs> man, that thing is fugs, man. Like, let's just call it what it is. And I was, I was having a, I was having a back and forth with a, uh, I think it was, I think it was Captain Mike. I was, I was having a back and forth with, and I was like, you know, I honestly don't see it because I honestly thought it was just um, relegated to your the same house, the same home Wi-Fi network, right? So I was thinking this that does me no different from my phone um, that I use my phone. I got my little Razer Kishi here that I can expand out and put in my little. My little spare phone, right? I put in my my little spare phone in here, and I can play it. Um, and it's the same thing. I can do that with Steam Link. I was thinking it's not, it's really no difference. I don't understand the investment cost, but because it's two hundred bucks, you know what I mean? Like it's two hundred bucks. You're right. The thing is ugly, but it, it, it because it literally has two dual sense uh, controllers on the side. Man, it has it has it has them on the side. And to me, that's the thing that makes it because it looks like the screen doesn't fit. It doesn't look like Sony's always been the kings of uh, product design and 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 uh, product engineering, mm-hmm. but this one looks like it was. It just does not fit. It just looks like it is portmanteau, almost duct tape on. <laughs> it looked like it's duct taped together, man. So um, that's 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 the problem with me. Like I I I, I just don't I just don't get the value at what they're uh, at, at two hundred bucks. I don't get. It. Yeah, but yeah, because even they didn't have to. They're like, oh, we, we want to make it feel like you're holding the controller, but it's not going to completely because because it um <clears throat> sorry my throat's all messed up right now for some reason but the um it didn't have to because like the steam deck doesn't look like a dual sense controller right but it still feels like you're holding the controller it feels still feels con- comfortable yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. and because there's some things like how it looks like the b button is like melting off of the the steam deck and you're like, mm-hmm. man, that looks like that. I feel weird. But when you're playing, it feels normal. So maybe they, they did beta testing and we we're like, if they made it normal to where it didn't look like it was kind of melting off the side, maybe it felt like it was too high and then they, they, they fixed it. But it feels, right. it does not feel like you're you're falling off of it. it. It looks like it would be, but it feels natural and the thumbsticks feel great because for one, they're grown man thumbsticks. You know, they're regular okay. size okay. thumbsticks. <laughs> not these little like on the switch and stuff to where it just feels like i mean even playing something like bioshock i mean i felt like i was aiming all over the place on this on the switch you know yeah like, when it seemed that so, it's not like that so here's my little razor kishi when you got the phone in there right like it looks pretty legit does it not yeah like i thought it looks i mean now of course this is what it looks like on the back but i mean I, I still think I still think it's okay, man. I think it's I think it's an all right little contraption when you just throw your old phone in and um, yeah, you just you just make things happen. And I can go to my Steam Link and I could just just hook it up. So it's to me, like I said, um, but yeah, it, I wish I had a Steam Deck. It, it, you know, if we're talking about Steam Decks, I kind of wish I had a Steam Deck. Um, but I honestly don't know when I'd use it because 
right now I'm full. I remote. I work fully remote, and yeah, um, I've been applying for a couple other positions, which we'll get into because we're going to talk about this application process. It's something. It's something's ridiculous, but uh, but um, but yeah, man. But so I don't. I don't really. And anytime I drive, anytime I go somewhere, I'm the one driving. Right, so I right. don't really understand how I'd actually get some time. And then when I go somewhere, I'm watching my son's games. Well, it's not like I'm going to one of his wrestling tournaments and I got time all day. You know what I mean? It's like it's not that anymore. It's like, hey, we sit down, we watch a football game, and that's really about it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, because when – um when the switch come out, I, like I thought it was pretty cool. And then it, that's why I never really pulled the trigger, even though there was some things on the switch. I did want to, I mean, I still want to play like Mario Odyssey and stuff to like the, the major ones, but it, right. um, I, I, I didn't, ha- I didn't have that time either, but now I do because I have mm-hmm. normal breaks and all that kind of stuff. And right. I, actually the last job I had, I mean, back in North Carolina, I did have long breaks because the client I was working with would want to take long breaks. So, the Steam Deck oh, okay. would have been. That's actually started when I started wanting one, but, but yeah, right. <laughs> There'd be hours going past with I didn't have nothing to do, so I didn't right. be able to right. came then. But the, <laughs> but, but for one, I think the Steam Deck would be fine for someone like you or the the other thing, the the Asus thing, the um, yeah, the ROG Ally, yeah, the because people that are used to something like the Switch or a console the steam deck and the ally are not that they are a computer it's it it is a laptop that has a a launch factor to where you can launch it right in the steam big picture mode so you have to think of it as a computer that you might have to mess with some updates you might have to tweak a couple of things you know it's not going to be like a console like experience it's going to be an extension of your pc so if you only have a steam deck It might not be the best experience, but he ha- if you have a decent PC and a Steam Deck, it's kind of a great experience because you can be like right. playing Final Fantasy VII Remake on your big old 4K TV and then be like, well, I got to go to this thing and I know I'm going to be sitting in the car for an hour. I right. can boot up the same freaking game hooked into my phone's hotspot and so I have cloud saves and like boot it right right up. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, that's cool, and not have to worry about streaming. Because when I had the Kishi thing too, and I did the the cloud streaming from Xbox, and it was I played through all of Mass Effect One that way. But the one mm. thing I did sometimes have to repeat submissions because oh. maybe okay. I had to. I was right in the middle of a thing right when break was over, and I couldn't save, so I had to just turn it off. And you know, there's no, yeah. there's no. Cl- on the Steam Deck, I can just turn it off. It's not really off. It just goes in standby mode, and it mm-hmm. will, like, I can boot it right back. I don't even have to pause the game. I can just hit the boom right in the middle of a, a text conversation in Mass Effect, and it'll boot right back up. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that kind of instantaneous gaming that really makes it really great for, like, just playing five minutes here, five minutes there. So that's the one thing I like. So that's like suspend state gaming, right, where you can suspend yeah. it where it is Mm -hmm. and so um that's one of the reasons why i really got down with the uh xbox one when it came out like the not the one x right but the xbox one when it came out like i got down with that thing just because you can suspend something in the middle of something and just the the next time you turn it back on boop you were right there and it's it's so good man so um i really like that but to be able to do that all the time when you only have a short amount of time you don't really have to worry about long boot up times don't have to worry about loading to the game finding your checkpoint getting back to where you were no man the second you unsuspend that game you right back where you were so yeah that's that's awesome that really facilitates like quick movement and getting through stuff and library fatigue is a thing like you'll yeah you'll be like okay let me turn on my thing or turn on my computer and here's all my games. Okay, all 1,504 of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, even though I was just playing this game, all these other games are already in my face. And then all of a sudden I'm like, well, do I want to play this game I was just playing? Do I really want to get back into Call of Duty World War II and finish that up? No, but look at this Call of Cthulhu over here. I haven't really started that. Look at, oh, Metro. I haven't, I, I haven't played that in a while. I haven't finished that. I'm, oh, mm-hmm. man, I miss playing Spider-Man even though I've already finished it. I really want to play that. And then all of a sudden you just, all your time goes by and you, all you've been yeah. doing is wondering what you're going to play versus suspend mode. You're like, oh, yeah. I'm doing this right now. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. The spin motor's like, oh, we back? <laughs> like, it's one of those. It's like, oh, we here? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm a fan. I'm a fan of suspend mode, man. I, I like those. Um, the only thing is, I know you like it, Chase, but my, my only thing is, man, my biggest concern is battery life, G. Like, that's my big concern is like, most of them, I think. I think they said like if you're running a steam, I think you can run maybe three hours at a time, and that's about it. That's like maxed out. Um, that you can get like three hours in at a time before you got to sit it down and recharge it. I'm like, I'm sorry, that's a lot of money, man. And then secondarily, it's like, man, I could play three hours at a time on a phone, and I I, I could play on a phone and probably get three and a half. Um, on a phone with a big battery, you know what I mean? So it's like, but again, I'm playing on the phone. So I got, I'm relying on something else to drive it. So it's a different device altogether, but man. Yeah. And, but you also <sighs> have to think like, if you're sitting there going to do a three hour gaming session, yeah, you might as well have be on your PC. Mm-hmm, what mm-hmm, we're t- mm-hmm. But three hours of battery life goes a long way when you're only playing five or 10 minutes at a time. True that. True that. True and that. Also, and you can play anywhere. You can, there's profiles for, um, uh, power saving for economic and uh, performance and stuff like that. Yeah. To where you can save it per game. You'd be like, well, Final Fantasy looks pretty good. It plays pretty good at 30 frames per second at 720. It kind of looks like it did on the PS4. So it plays really well and does all this stuff. But, on but on Call of Duty, I kind of wanted it at 60. So I might, um do final fantasy locked at 30 but then call of duty at 60 and call of duty i might go but through the battery a little bit more but on final fantasy i don't actually on final fantasy mm-hmm. i mean I, I barely went through any battery life because the 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 frame rate is the tick like that's the only thing i really ever changed or the refresh okay. rate not the, the frame refresh rate, rate. Yeah. So yeah the refresh rate and then lock the game at 30 and then it, it really didn't eat no because battery life but then when i was playing dead space i was doing it wide open at 60 and um, okay. man that ate through some battery like i mean by lunch was over i was ready to charge but y'all <sighs> but the thing is the um uh dead uh, dead space um the steam deck has a uh, pass through charge pass through to where mm-hmm. if it's done charging you can just keep it on the truck tra- and it's just gonna power it like a like you got a computer plugged in like it's okay. not going to overcharge it, so that's a okay. that's a cool thing too. And it's it's chargers. It doesn't take it that long to charge. It's got a really really good charger. That even even my um pick the the, the charger that come with my Pixel Five charges yeah. Steam Deck slow. So Dang. Like its okay. main charger is like a it, it's a powerful thing. Yeah yeah yeah. It's probably like a sixty five watt charger or whatever. A lot of laptops. Um, Use use a like a sixty five watt charger, and I think the power pull on this is similar to that of a laptop. So, um, well, that's interesting, man. That's good. So you got a lot of stuff knocked out. You got a lot of games done. Yeah. Um, anything anything you looking forward to? Um, for the rest of the whole year. Yeah, I mean, for one, Alan Wake Two is coming okay. out in okay. October, okay. and then the uh, next month, in the not very long from now, maybe less than a month from now. We'll be back in that cyberpunk. Boy, boy. Yeah. That's on my list, man. I got a, I got a list here, man, that I was that I was making of the stuff that I'm looking forward to, man. Um that uh that Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven Phantom Liberty though, with Idris Elba in there. Yeah, I am looking forward to that because that thing completely changes the game. You know, I've talked about slip like it completely changes how you mod stuff and the effects from that, and um, it changes how the game loads because now like an SSD is is really recommended um, on on you know it's really recommended part of the recommended specs now. So it changes how it loads. Like so much stuff is different now, man. So I am. Very, very, very much looking forward to that. But here's the thing. I played Cyberpunk on PC when it first launched, and I actually didn't have as big of an issue with it as most people on consoles. That, so that I really was, liked the game. That was my um, same experience. To where if yeah. I did have issues, it was like, it's a video game. That's video game issue type stuff. I mean, there's yeah, more yeah. issues in Skyrim when it launched than how I found in Cyberpunk. But, you know, Bethesda mm-hmm. that. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I like Bethesda games, but, you know, but I still think it's unfair for their their issues to be quirky and right cyberpunks they choose to be a problem exactly exactly now to but there's this credit on some of the reviews some of the previews came out and said that he the this game has the fewest amount of bugs 
just in general. This game is the most polished game Bethesda has ever released, which still does not excite me for it because I am not a Bethesda fan. I just don't like their games. I don't like them. Send hate mail to Chase. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but no, I, at some point I'll probably give Starfield a shot, especially if it may end up on Game Pass. So um, may give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why I actually got Game Pass. Well, I got Game Pass back originally. I mean, for Starfield, but I got it back earlier than I would have to um, try out that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre on, like, maybe a game night or something. Uh huh. Because it's a um, three v four multiplayer, and and I think it's a lot of people are really liking it a lot better than the other horror multiplayer games because like dead by daylight and stuff i've tried okay. that because I, I was like man dead by daylight could be fun with friends but even with friends it's not as bad it, it's just so boring like yeah like even when you're playing the killer you're like i'm walking around barely doing anything like it's just mm. i don't understand but in in tmc or tcm it, it seemed like um there's more to do and more it, it just seemed like more variety and how okay. they added the like 1970s like grit to it it just looks cool you know yeah so i, so I, I didn't even know that was on game pass but i was like oh man that's pretty cool so i got game pass back for a for a month and um basically just play through starfield and you know because i'm not keeping it forever because uh, i mean i'm not paying monthly just for something i'm barely using but i will use yeah starfield and yeah stuff. Yeah, no, I, I understand, man. Like, I, I ended up getting a three month and I haven't really used it, man. I just unfortunately just hit it a, a busy work time and a busy time for like my son's stuff. And I would get into what else I've been busy with, man, because life has been crazy. But um, yeah, man. Um, but yeah, we'll. And then uh, later on, I think we'll come back to some of these games and anticipate when I go through mine because I want to talk a little bit about Gamescom, man. We got to get that in, though. You yeah. got to get that in, though, because that Gamescom is going to be look good. Listen, it was so much stuff out there, man. But just a couple of things were reinforced for me, man. It was Black Black Myth Wukong. Love that game, man. Really, really, really looking forward to that game. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be insane, man. It's going to be insane. And, um, but yeah, I think, and I think for me, um, what else, man? What else you got? What else, you know, because we kind of jumped into, uh, uh, what you've been playing? We jumped into what you're anticipating and stuff, man. Anything else? Well, um, on I, I just booted up the Game Pass app. It reminded me of this game that actually just released in Game Pass. That if anybody has Game Pass, they should try out. It looks really cool. I um haven't really tried it out yet, but it still <laughs> just looks really cool because I know the developer is really good. Yeah. It is um from Sabotage Studio. They did uh the Messenger, which is a really good NES style. Yeah, I have that actually. I haven't played it yet, though. I don't believe. But yeah, if if you like NES style like two uh, D action games, basically, um, you should definitely give it a try because it, it, it and it kind of changes the game a lot. There's a lot of surprises in that game. That game's great. But um, yeah. it's a game called Sea of Stars, which is kind of a top down RPG yeah. looking. It's mm-hmm. very, very, very beautiful looking. Yeah, um, I actually uh, read a couple of. Uh, Read a couple of previews and watched a couple, or read a couple of reviews on that thing, and uh, people really, really, really seem to like that game. Yeah. So oh. that's good. Hey, right, so I was looking. I do own the Messenger on Epic Games. Yep, one of the ones I got given away for free. Hell yeah. So, so yeah. But yeah, I, and I, I have seen reviews for that, and that looked pretty good. And then Sea of Stars reviews looked pretty darn good. They said it was a it was a throwback, um, throwback to kind of like older games, and that. That sounds pretty cool, man. That sounds that sounds pretty fun. Now it's like thirty some odd bucks. I mean, at that price, I'm, I mean, I don't know though. At that yeah. price, I'd rather get something like the Octopath Traveler or you know the Second Wind, or something like that. Um, well, you just but, said you had um you had Game Pass for three months. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I think it's think it's coming up on the end though. Um, but the but yeah, uh, man. But yeah, the messenger has a very quirky sense of humor too, because there's like things, okay, like like. Like a certain character tell you not to touch something, you keep touching it, and it, it just keeps. And you think, how many different like scenarios is he gonna t- say like the different ways of not to touch this? And it, it goes through so many. It's, oh, that's it's, great! It's, it's hilarious. That's so. great. That's great. Yeah, it, it was listed as uh, the genre was action and comedy, so it is listed as uh, I guess it is kind of recognizes that on uh, on Epic. Yeah, Chase, I was I was playing earlier. You see that controller ball? See that oh. controller ball? I was playing oh, yeah, earlier. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. If if I if y'all don't know, I actually had this controller for a while, this Power A controller. And uh Chase was looking for a nice little controller, and I was like, Man, I really like this Power A. You can like customize the colors and everything. And he was like, and I told him it was only like thirty, what was thirty, thirty five bucks, and he's like, yeah. Let me go ahead and grab that. <laughs> Let me go ahead yeah. and grab that. Yeah, so, yeah, I love it. I love the weight too. It's got a nice weight too. I think it's like a little bit heavier than the regular controller. You know, like, it is a little bit heavier. Feel, but it feels solid because I like the material that they used on this thing. It feels really good. Feels really good. So, yeah, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, I'm a fan of that, man. But um, uh, shoot, Chase, go ahead. What you been getting into, man? Listen, life has been busy. So I was saying, you know, I, I don't really have a chance to like play a lot of games, man. So, you know, my son, Junior, plays football, mm-hmm. um, pretty good student, pretty good athlete. Um, but uh, I so I don't know if I told you guys, but he's so like the coach called and gave him number one on the team. And he's an old school coach. And for a lot of coaches, that means you're the guy on the team, like you're the guy. And so um, coach asked me if I wanted to be in the booster club. I'm like, <sighs> I, I don't have any money, coach. He was like, no, just, you know, just basically we just do some fundraisers to make sure we have volunteers around like when we need something during game, like on game days and stuff like that. OK, coach, I can I can help with that. So, um, man, went out here the other day. Chase. Now, listen, last Friday. So this past Friday, um, you know, four days ago or whatever, they played their first game. The Friday before that, they had a scrimmage. Chase. It was a hundred and seven to 104 degrees or something outside that day 103 no lie pre before the stinking um before the heat index and keep in mind this is a um field that actually has turf on it so it's not a real grass field so it's much hotter um but they said hey we need someone to help cook these hot dogs so <laughs> so they had me out there grilling i grilled no lie no less than about 350 to 400 hot dogs on a grill um, it was 107 degrees outside. Now I was in the shade under the grill. It was a propane grill. I'd never used propane. They didn't give you a boy anything for the, it was the first time using these brand new grills. They went in there and had to get us popcorn popping oil, son, to put on like underneath the so it could so you could have kind of like some 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 type of fluid there, some type of oil there to um to cook the hot dogs, man. But I, I hooked it up for these kids, man. I was out there for like literally an hour. Hour cooking stinking hot you cooking, you're cooking hot pop, popcorn hot dogs man <laughs> if you can hear me yeah i was cooking hot dogs in 103 degree weather man for an hour no lie a whole hour so in the scrimmage the freshman went first then the jv went first then the varsity went first when my son was at so i was cooking through the through the uh freshman and the jv games man <laughs> It was insane, dog. It was stinking insane, man. Hotter than a firecracker. Had just taken a shower before I went out there, too, man. And I was like, hell, had I known this, I'd have just taken a wash off and then it just came on out here, man. If I was going to sweat like this, man, Dude, it, was, it was Sometimes nuts. you feel worse if you took in a taking a good shower. Oh, yeah. It was out there and and got, got out there and got all sweaty. It feels worse than if you went out there and just kind of washed up a little bit. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, and from now on, that's that's what I'll do. You know what I mean? It, 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 like it was, it was, it was instinct insane. But you know what? The kids were grateful, man, um, from both the schools and stuff because we were handing out, uh, we were handing out hot dogs and Gatorades and stuff after the game, and they were, they all said thank you, appreciate it. So um, they were all good, man. It was it was it was a good deal. It was a good deal. And then Chase, another reason why your boy ain't been able to play no games, man. So um, my neighbor, not like elected, like. I guess nominated me to be on this my homeowners association parks committee man I'm listen man now 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 look now I got to do budgets for the park I, I don't even use the park like that like that's one of the only thing that we use in this neighborhood really is the park and um so now I got to help write the budget for that portion of the homeowners association so and then buy a security camera for for the park and stuff so that's fun so that's a uh, but but that's that's once a month, man, at least, um, where I have to meet up and do all of that stuff, man, and prepare beforehand. Man, and, uh, you're, roped, you're roped into a lot of stuff you don't want to do, ain't you? A lot of crap, man. A lot of crap, man. So uh, now the one thing I want to do is is, is find some is, is, uh, is uh, you know, make myself more gainfully employed, you know, because I'm already working. But, you know, I'm looking to kind of change where I'm working at. And so, man, Chase, let me tell you, if you've never if you've never applied 
for a uh, a position in a federal agency, the process is cumbersome, to say the least. Dude, you have to go into the job announcement, read it in full, right? You need to read it. Make sure you submit everything. You got to read the requirement doc- required documents so you know what you have to submit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, you have to go in. And most of the positions that I apply for, like 95% of them have a questionnaire that you got to fill out. But it's not just a questionnaire where you answer the questions, Chase. Oh, no, it wouldn't be that simple. You have to answer the questions, but then you have to tell them where you answer the question. at. Like when you answer the question, if they ask about experience doing X, Y, or Z, if you say, I have experience doing X when I did this particular job, you have to go back to your resume and make sure that X experience is visible under that particular job title and you have to go in and it's no less than like 15 anywhere between 15 to 20 questions on this thing right when you're doing this questionnaire so you have to go through every single time you apply for a job you basically have to customize it for every single job and you know what i did a few weekends ago i sat down and i applied for about five jobs in a row i was i was on the computer for about three and a half hours just applying for just just (laughs) it is an arduous arduous process man but um hey, thankfully I'm, i mean i'm sure that at some point we'll have a job application simulator i mean there's some there's one for everything so, so one of them is coming one of them is one of them is making like they had papers please the next one will be like applications please like i'm sure <laughs> it'll be something like that man so so um so so yeah man but i did i did get a couple of interviews out of it man i had i had an interview yesterday and one day so Man, Lord willing, I can uh, get one of those positions, man, and and, and move on. Um, but but yeah, man. But when I did game, um, I think I mentioned last time, and I don't know if I did here, but I, I did wrap up God of War on PC. You know, I'd already played it on PS4. But man, that game is outstanding on PC. Whoever did the PC port needs to do every P- PlayStation PC port from now henceforth. Uh, repeat, it just needs to be repeat. Done. Which which one was it again? The the first God of War. Oh, yeah, on, yes, uh, yes. On PC. Yeah, like whoever handled that port needs to do every PlayStation, uh, what, what what do they call it, PlayStation PC? That's the name of the division. That make, they need to do all PlayStation PC games henceforward mm-hmm. because, man, God, that game is that game is fantastic on PC. Like, it was great on PS4. Don't get it wrong, but right, right. fantastic on PS4. And then, man, like I've been saying, Chase, man, I'm I'm gonna say it, man. Like your brother, I think I think it's your brother, man. He's right, dude. Marvel Midnight Suns is a great game. Like I don't like tactical RPGs. I don't like turn based RPGs. I don't like them. But this game is both, and this game is extremely fun. And because it, and you know, it also has the social elements in it, kind of like from Persona, where you have the social links and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the, the the messaging system that you have back and forth between people in there is called Super Link. So it's just, it's really well done. It, it The characters in there are actually more complex than you thought. Like, Blade is more complex. Magic is more complex. Like, it's just very well done. So, I really like it. Um, I really think anyone who likes Marvel would like this game. Yeah. Um, the the um, the difficulty can be adjusted down. I think I'm just playing on normal right now. I'm not playing on like ultra easy, but the, it can be adjusted down. And I've already unlocked other levels of difficulty because I've been like as I leveled up, I've been going in wiping stuff just like. And like I said, I'm not a fan of this the style of game, but man, this game is so well done. You just you just don't care. Yeah, you just don't care because those like tactical type ones. Are, yeah, I wasn't really too into those either. Just for the, it just seemed like I'm having to think two or three or four steps ahead when like mm-hmm. a normal turn based RPG like Persona or Final Fantasy or something. It's it's more about grinding and making sure you're overpowered for that said encounter. Right, so, right, right. So those, mm-hmm. while like the old school turn based RPG is just kind of boring gameplay. It's not necessarily hard gameplay when something a tactics game is supposed to be hard. But the yeah. um but I think Midnight Suns it seemed like they made it to where you can scale like you said, scale it to where if you just yeah. have to enjoy it for what it is. And right. my brother's actually playing another one called the Miasma Chronicles. And Yeah, I've seen them. 
it has me interested because I'm in, living in Kentucky right now, and it takes place in Kentucky. And when I was watching mm-hmm. him play it, it was like we're going through we're going through so and so county right now. It's like, so and so. We're like that's down the street. It's just, yeah, it's just like, <laughs> it was kind of cool, you know. Right, right, and, and like I said, man, I, I think I forgot to tell you, but like the moves in here, this is a card based battler, so your moves are drawn out of a deck like randomly like you know you equip your deck you build your deck but then the the moves are drawn out of the deck randomly the cards are drawn out randomly and i don't like card games um and i and i don't like you know these 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 type of art these tactical rpgs but man if for some reason this thing is great like it really really is so i highly recommend it when it goes back on sale because i think i got it for like 35 bucks with um like a a deluxe package or something if it goes back on sale that's a great yeah. deal, like the whole yeah. Because like the deluxe, if you got that not on sale, that's like probably like seventy, eighty dollars. It's like seventy. It was like seventy five dollars on like not on sale, yeah. and um, I got it for like thirty five. So I highly recommend it, man. Like it's it's, it's really good, and it, it, believe me, take it from someone who much rather plays something like a Devil May Cry or God of War any day of the week. Um, game is really good, man. Really, really good. Um, and then you know what, man, I. I've realized I may have been aging out of some of the game of of cer- some certain games. Now, I did enjoy um I did enjoy the the Tekken uh gameplay at Evo cuz Evo was wasn't too long ago. And I think it was it was since before the last time we recorded the show, man, but I I was enjoying some Tekken but then I couldn't really sit and watch anything else, man. You know, there's always some of the you know, some of the staples and stuff, man, but I just I really like I enjoyed Tekken and they actually introduced the new Tekken, Tekken 8. Uh, but um, man, I was watching Evo and just realized it may not be for me anymore, man. Uh, yeah, may not be for I've me never anymore. been someone that was like super good at fighting games, but mm-hmm. I definitely enjoyed fighting games amongst friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's the best. The trash talking, man. The the cheesy play. Oh, man, it's the, it's the best. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. Because we were just playing. Um... Uh, Street Fighter Six at my brother's house, and uh-huh. that looks how it played and stuff. That seems like my, that might be the greatest fighting game of all time. That you think so? Is really <laughs> yeah, it, it looks great. Played. It looks great, man, because they actually shifted that engine. You know, they were using they were using a um, Unreal Engine in Street Fighter, mm-hmm. and then could but you know it's Capcom, right? So they have the the RE engine with all those Resident Evil remakes. Now it's now it's in the RE engine, and so. Um, it, it takes on another different look, so um, that's great, though, man. I, I'm, 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 I've always been a fan of Street Fighter. My, my fighters of choice have always been no Mortal Kombat and uh, Eternal Champions. Oh, mm-hmm. Honestly, always been my my fighters of choice. But I, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at Street Fighter. You can give me Ken. I'll, I'll, I'll put some work in on some folks. Um, it used to be Dawson and uh, and Blanca. Ken, new, Dawson, and Blanca. That new uh, Mortal Kombat one looks gruesome. With, you know, uh, I, have, <laughs> I haven't even looked, man, because I know, I know uh, uh, Ed Boone is just, he's a masochist, dude. Like, he loves, that dude loves just dismembering people. It's ridiculous. Like, they used to have four different rib cages when you killed one person in Mortal Kombat 1. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's it's ridiculous, man. So, um, I haven't even looked, but you know, Sub-Zero's my guy. Like, Sub-Zero's my guy. So, that's that's always my guy in Mortal Kombat. You can beat me when I got Sub Zero. You can you can play you can play a fighting game, um, but yeah, man. So that's that's pretty much been it for me. But I I do still like fighting games. I just I don't know if I can sit and watch like I used to because I used to be able to watch anybody at any game at Evo, right? I just I can't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but it did make me um, hype for some anticipated games that are coming out, and they kind of like just released because you know we just had Gamescom, but like some of the games that like, like just released that I re- that I'm building a backlog for again like for this year that I really want to get on sale chase uh when the, when the money get right um is uh we already talked about Cyberpunk like that's literally that was number 1 on my list uh-huh. for sure um number 2 on my list man I really wanted to uh, I I always wanted to check out that Immortals of Avium um because I like Gina Torres cuz I used to watch Suits and of course everybody watched um uh, what was the space cowboy thing um cowboy that she was in huh no not cowboy bebop it's um it's, it was the live josh, action what was josh, the, the, that josh whedon thing the josh whedon show yeah i can't oh, remember it what now what is that uh I, it had like, nathan one of the most popular Finn. geek thing of all time I can't yeah the name of yeah it. yeah i can't think of it either man ah uh, 
Scar is going to kill us because it's his show. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, anyway, she was always in there. And, and I, like I said, I watched her in Suits as well. And so the fact that she's in this game and it's like her face and she's voicing the character and everything, I really wanted to see her in that. And Immortals of Avium actually is Unreal Engine 5. So, um, and Miranda Bacharin is in that show too, man, because she, she was also in uh, Gotham. And then she was also in a lot of other shows that didn't that didn't work out, but that one actually worked. <laughs> it was the name of the ship too, and I can't even think of it now. I feel bad. Um, but Immortals of Avium, and then dude, like I said, not really a fan of this type of gameplay. Um, even though I own Div- um, Divinity Original Sin one, two, Pillars of Eternity, Dead Fire, Baldur's Gate three, man, I really want to play that just because I've heard people say it's like the best. RPG of all time, and uh, it's, it's, it's particularly of this past decade, and specifically this generation. But I really want to play that game. I don't care what anybody say. I want to play some BG three because man, and I tell you, on Diablo, man, I had I got lucky. I I hit a rogue character, and I had a build that was just nasty. It was a vulnerability build, man. It was, and it wasn't the normal one. It wasn't the normal one. It was the one that I had crafted, and right, so. Right. Um, but you know, that's an action game. Diablo is an action, um, isometric RPG. This one is a more of a strategic, uh, turn-based RPG, but I still want to play it, man, because just the, the character interactions, the, the dialogue, the choices, the consequence, that stuff reminds me so heavily of like Dragon Age Origins, which I love, which I can make an argument is probably the best in the Dragon Age series. So, um, I'm really looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3 and, that I definitely want to get that along with um if I had to choose three for this year only to get it'd be Baldur's Gate three Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven maybe not Immortals or Avium but probably either Callisto Protocol or the Dead Space remake because I trust Ace's opinion he's a huge Dead Space fan and Callisto Protocol is supposed to be a lot like it but he actually truly enjoyed both games and I would rather have a new experience than repay for an old one so. Well, I, I will I can vouch for Dead Space remake that it's the definitive way to play Dead Space. Yeah, like it's yeah, fantastic. yeah. They put some work in on that, and then um, but yeah, I I I, I watched a startup Callisto Protocol, and it was quite interesting, man. Like the voice acting, the story, um, how that shook out. Um, do you so like, it was pretty. Do you like Dead Space? Oh yeah. Do you like Mike Tyson's Punch Out? Yeah. <laughs> Right. I know it's a lot of slang and some things, man. I know it's a lot of slang and some stuff. So I'm looking forward to it, man. For real. If I'm, yeah, if I can get it. So those are the three. If I had to choose uh, only three games to get in this get this fall, it would it would more than likely be those those three things. Um, may, maybe I could sub in Starfield for one of those. Like I said, I'm not convinced yet. Not convinced yet. Um, not saying I won't. I couldn't be, but man, I'm not got, convinced yet. You know, like how you used to say, man. Well, just rent it. I mean, you know what I mean. So basically, yeah. that would be just get a month of Game Pass off of CD mm-hmm. games for six ninety nine. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I could get a month and and give it a shot and see if I like it, right? And if I do, then I can go with it. Um, but yeah, we'll give it a shot, man. I'll um I'll give it a shot and see. But man, honestly, Chase, man, shoot, that's all your boys been up to and been doing, man. You know, work has kept your boy busy and will keep me busy. Hope. Probably from now to the end of October, man, and then and Lord willing, I can be up out of this place by then. So, yeah, um, man, because uh, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been crazy for me too. Because like just different things would keep me away from game. I mean, just for the fact that like at night when I want to sit down and play, by the time I'm ready to play, now I'm too tired to play. You know? What I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's that it's that old it's that old man syndrome, man. It's that old man syndrome. People used to make for Ace and them used to make fun of me all the time for coming in and like going to sleep on game night, like going to sleep on the mic. Listen, man, when <laughs> when it's when it's time, it's time. You know, uh, I get up early. I start my days early. I generally either go to the gym or go into my own gym in my in my house and work out. So it's like, man, uh, like I'm up early and I go to man later in the evening. I'm tired, man. I mean, you, you know Borderlands, right? Like, did you? Yeah. Did you, well, how you can like just idle. And you'll still get the XP that everybody does. Yeah. So I fell asleep on game night one time with some buddies on the West Coast. So they were like playing way past my bedtime. But I fell asleep. Man, I woke up like 10 levels above where I fell asleep at. Because I just, 
I would every time they'd go through a door, they had to carry me, and I'd just be sitting there at the door, you know. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just raking in XP. <laughs> Asleep. <laughs> I know it, man. I know it, man. Um, yeah, man. I I used to I used to pass out on that game too, man. I don't know what it is about that game, but I, gosh, I would go to sleep on Butterland so much. And bless Scar's heart, he would try to pull me along through that game, but I'm like Scar, this is, man, I'm tired, dog. And I don't know if it was born or just a combination of my life, but yeah, I just could not make it. Could make it, man. Oh, <laughs> oh, me me and the wife did uh play a little Far Cry Five. That's a good game. Far Cry Five, you yeah. it is. You know, I have it. I started it. And I don't know what pulled me off of that game, man. Actually, yes, I do. Cyberpunk 2077 pulled me off of that game. I started that up just before I think I, um, maybe, yeah, I think I started it up just before I, I jumped heavily into Cyberpunk. But yeah, that pulled me, that, I think that pulled me off of it, man. Um, but yeah, it started off really good because I was really wanting to see their take on like how they were going to like implement the, uh, their, their assaults on like, or I guess their takes on Christianity and the whole family that's weird and crazy. That's that that was what was gonna interest me, man, is that whole thing. Um, cause I know Ubisoft mm-hmm. is kinda like that. So they, yeah. they they take a jab at everything culturally, um, depending on where they place those those stories. So um yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah, cause it uh, cause like you said, Cyberpunk. The Cyberpunk is the reason I um started my focus backlog, like at first, it was games I wanted to finish before Cyberpunk come out, and then once mm-hmm. I finished Cyberpunk, then it just become what I could consider my focus backlog, which was games I want to finish out of my backlog in this given time frame or whatever. So, yeah, and that's kind of focused my time as well. Man, I have so many that would be fantastic. Like I started, I started up Disco Elysium a while back, and I thought it was really interesting, man. But I was like, boy, it, it felt like a Souls game, even though it's like an RPG and it doesn't play like it. It's just like when you when you want to play that game, you got to sit down and dedicate time to that game because right. it will just draw you in, and you have to like really pay attention and focus, and you can't even have any distractions going on when you play that game. So. um but I feel like that when I play Midnight Suns. I feel like that um, when I, at the time, was playing Divinity, you know, Original Sin or whatever. Um, the second one, like, um, I still have the first one installed from when we from when we started that up. It's like those games you have to sit down and devote time because you can't just nibble at those games. Like you got to take it out chunks. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But that's good though, man. I, I I like Far Cry. I hope you tell me how that goes. I kind of want to get back into that one, man. And that one was nice, but. Man, now I have Dying Light 2 installed. Like I said, Marvel Midnight Suns. I still have Diablo. I have Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in. I, uh, yeah, man, I got I got quite a few games over here installed right now hey, that I need to get through. You need to lobby your area to get some better internet rules or something. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, listen, um, I am still waiting. I'm still waiting on that. Uh, I'm still waiting on that little uh, internet cable, that fiber co-op to come out my way, man. And I will absolutely jump ship. Um, so um, right now, though, my my internet's pretty pretty affordable. But I just I hate the whole idea of data caps, man. Yeah, hate it, hate it, hate it. So yeah, man. And but dog, that's all I that's, that's all I got, man. I ain't got nothing else. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I, I think we got it for our first episode. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. What we what we gonna have them do? How they gonna get back with us, man? They gonna jump into the Discord? What they gonna do? Yeah, they're gonna jump into the Discord because we'll have the link to the Discord in the show notes like okay. before. And um, as a social media stuff, I mean, I don't know if I mean I personally don't use a lot of social media, so I unless someone else wants to do more of the social media stuff for the show that's probably not going to be one of the strong suits to show is social media because i mean if i'm not doing it for myself i'm probably not going to do it for the show you know what i mean okay <laughs> i got you i got you it's media fair has got to where it's just just a bunch of when they call like doom scrolling that's seems yeah. to be you say it was like oh well your normal use of social media but then a certain way you're using it is doom scrolling now it's, I think it's all doom scrolling. Oh yeah, man! Like it's just yeah, because it continues forever, man. So I think the only way we can, uh, yeah, the only way I could do that is if I actually just like went in and just created a whole new account, or just unfollowed everybody and then just only followed the people that I actually am gonna watch. 
you know, yeah. like that, that would be, that would be it. Right. So, um, so yeah, imagine it's more like going to your favorites in your uh, internet browser, clearing them all out and then just adding back in the ones you actually use one right. by one. <laughs> it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Well, so. Here's what it's really like. You know how, um, oh man, my grandma's phone number that it's kind of, it's kind of shitty that we're wanting to get rid of it, but mm-hmm. it's been a phone number since, you know, before I was even born. But right. the reason that we get so many freaking telemarketer calls is because it's an old phone number. Yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. has it. So like this Twitter account, I've had a Twitter <laughs> account since 2009, you know, you know what I mean? Right. So, so that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's right. a long time for a lot of shit that maybe I followed <laughs> <laughs> fucking 15 years ago right now right. i don't give a i don't care about the amazing atheist why am i following that guy you know <laughs> <laughs> the amazing atheist wow really uh, that's hilarious man but but no i get you man so yeah um i think the one thing too man is that as an old guy right i'm an old guy i'm 43 um I, the the platforms i use are antiquated right i use i use x right and i hate I don't hate. Let's just let me rephrase that. I really don't jive with Elon. Musk. Like, I just don't like he and I. We don't get down in the same circles. I just don't do it. Um, but to know that I'm using a platform that he is like firmly messing up, <laughs> like he is just like, like firmly staring into it off a cliff, almost, man. Like, almost uh, like on purpose. Like he bought it just to like drive it into the ground. I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I made this joke the other day. I'm like, so you so I'm like. Well, as I say this, you'll recall how this whole acquisition of Twitter happened, right? He said he was going to do it, and the people backed out. And then and then he backed out, and the people was like, no, nah, man, you said you was going to buy it, son. Let's get on over and get it done. And I'm like, anytime you make somebody do something they don't want to do, they're, they're going to do it begrudgingly. So he took over Twitter, but he's doing it begrudgingly, right? He's like a little kid like that's just like, well, you made me clean my room, so I'm going to clean my room as loud and as obnoxiously as possible. So I'm going to do it, but you ain't going to like how I do it. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing right now. That's exactly what's going on. And so when I when I hear and see what he's doing out there and I hear people have the lodging the complaints about it, I'm like, this is literally this. This man is a walking satire of everyone who cares about Twitter. Like, that's just what it is. It is just a walking satire. So it's, it's just crazy. Like he changed it to X and I'm just like, why? Why? Because it was it was it's more like X good. Because it used to be good, but it's no longer good, right? So I, I don't I don't understand, man. But but yeah, so that's why I'm that's why I'm at with X. But I sit over there because I, I don't like TikTok. Um Instagram is to me kind of pointless. It's a big marketing stage. Um what I don't even know what WhatsApp is, right? I know it's a calling app, right? I don't even I don't even jump on it. Um and so that's it. Like Anything else? Like, am I going to use, see what's, what's Meta's new one? Uh, threads? I don't like Facebook. So uh, I, even, I have a Facebook. I've I don't heard even, of Threads. I don't even know what it is. Is that supposed to be like Twitter? Yeah. It's, it, is a, it is a Twitter um, competitor, direct competitor, for sure. Hmm. A Twitter direct competitor. Um, it, from sounds the like a, it sounds like a clothing brand that's like <laughs> geared towards like... <laughs> Urban, yeah, yeah. <laughs> threads, son. Them threads be, um, yeah. I think there used to be a store in the mall that said that was called Threads, um, with a Z, with a Z. I think it was Threads with a Z. Let me let me Google that. Oh, I want to Google that. But um, but yeah, man. So um, at any rate, yeah, that's 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 kind of I feel like how Elon is running this thing, man. So yeah. so um, you mean to tell me that you don't run in the same circles as the richest man in the world? Ah, uh, no, nah, man, no, nah, man. Like listen. <laughs> Nah, nah, no, nah, no need, no need, man, no you need. Know, yeah, I, when you were talking about him like begrudgingly doing the Twitter thing, uh huh. Do you remember the old like Looney Tunes episode where it was like the little owl and he's like wanting to like sing it in the Juna and the Springer, but then when yeah. his, his mom, his parents were making him sing the other song, like when he's singing the other song and he's like begrudgingly doing it, that's him running uh-huh. Twitter. 
But when he's singing in the yeah. Duna in the Springer, <laughs> that's him like going to space and putting chips in people's heads. And yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly, man. <laughs> um, so just so you know, there is a clothing store. It's an Australia. It's an Australian women's clothing store called Threads. Threads uh-huh. women's everyday fashions. I am throwing that in the chat. Um, <laughs> So we have that here. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna go. Uh, let me let me open that link up. Let me open that link up. B. Let me get up in there. Yep, copy. But it is not urban because this lady does not look urban. Or it now, could, could be, be a, it could be a DLC I, for The Sims too. I guess, I guess so. I guess so. It could be. <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be. It could be, man. Um, yeah, this is funny. There you go. But it's in the chat now, man. So <laughs> threads clothing yeah for sure man contemporary women's fashion well she could she could sue meta and like make a shit to the money huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> um get that hey, I think it's, money. yeah i think it's called c threads app yep but this one is with an s right yeah it's with an s so um so yeah number three top free social app uh average rating is teen but it's only rated a three out of five. But yeah, when you pull it up, look at it, dog. It looks exactly like. And I think if you would have converted over and added an account early on to Threads, um, it would have brought over all of your f- all of your Twitter folks. And so if they would have came over um, or from X, it would have brought all of them over from X. But they had they had like bonus motivations or incentives for you to bring people over, especially if you were um, like an influencer. Um, they had motivations and stuff. You could have like brought in your whole crap. Well, hell, I, I mean, if you like the 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 kind of stream of consciousness, like small sentence type social media, like Twitter is. Mm-hmm. I mean, Threads may be better than what X is now, even though you probably don't want to admit it. <laughs> it, it. Look, it could be. I mean, it could be. But like the reason I'm using it now is really for like recruiting efforts for my son. Uh-huh. Um, because a lot of coaches are on are on X and Twitter, like a lot of coaches, college football coaches, they're out there. Um, so um, that's the only reason that I'm really kind of engaging in it now, man. So, um, but it's it's nothing it's nothing more. But yeah, I just I just I just find it I find it quite hilarious, man. I wonder what Elon is going to destroy next. <laughs> just I'm, I'm just interested to see. I'm interested to see brains when he puts that biochip in your head. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, like this dude has ideas that are out there. Um, but he had, I guess he had enough sense to pull back on the AI reins and be like, okay, guys, hold up. AI is getting out of control. Pump your brakes. <laughs> Pump your brakes. <laughs> so, um, so no, I'm, I'm with him on that, though. Like, I, I rock with him on that. Yeah, I rock yeah, I'm with not, him. On I'm that. definitely not down with the AI, even on the simple, like, if it's even not on like the non scary stuff of AI. Like, if you, like, make AI art, to me, as an mm-hmm. artist who likes music, who likes art and yeah, yeah. has and, and creates and stuff, it is very anti-art. Oh, for sure. The, the infringement that it does, because it can take someone's style. And um, it can... So, Marquise Brown, you know, MKBHD, who does a lot of reviews and stuff, tech, tech hardware, he had, he had them... He told AI to write a script in his style. And it actually, you know, it didn't take long for it to spit it out. It actually wrote a script on a video on what he was talking about in his style, like with his language, with his mannerisms, with his, um, you know, kind of just with the way that he talks, um, all of that stuff, man. And I was like, that is insane. That's extremely dangerous because you can, man, you could put it does. And it doesn't even really have to make a lot of sense, but it did in this case. And the more people use it in that in that regard and in that way, I see why I see why the writer strike is going on, man. Like that's it's real disruptive to that industry, disruptive to people. I need to turn my other lights on because this thing is acting crazy. <laughs> it's fading in and out. But next time I'll have my big light on, I'm or maybe just try to get my uh my other lamp back um and then shine it over here. But yeah, man, that's it. That's all I got, dog. Um. It was good. It was good for a good first episode, man. Great run, and um, yeah, I hope I hope when people get out there in the uh, Discord and they tell us, you know, what's been going on with them, that they tell us, you know, what they're looking forward to at the end of the year, whether it's a movie, whether it's a game, whether it's a TV show, whether it's you know whatever, um, whether it's just 
you know, you sitting down and relaxing with your family for the holidays. It don't matter, man. Just let us know. Hit us up. We can engage in that. But I appreciate that, man. That's all I got you. Yeah, community engagement is always fun. Absolutely. Did you want to tell them about uh, where else they can find us on our um, hanging? Our hanging. Oh, yeah, the on hanging. Our, yeah, the yeah, hanging on our, hanging. on our reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, st- we still do the uh, uh, reactions on the Geeks Gone Raw YouTube channel. That... Um, and that's still going strong and like i said this this past like month or so like not to get into the nitty gritty of uh-huh. certain things but like it's been rough and to to try to schedule out things like this even though that things like this is good for your mental health like just to hang yeah. out and talk and yeah. even if you're not talking about the things that are really like i'm not talking to you know talking about your feelings or whatever it's still like right. good just to talk about what you want to talk you know what i mean yeah but, for sure man so so um so we're still doing the reactions it's supposed to be every wednesday and friday it hasn't really quite been that lately but it is it is going to start back and um but even if it's not you're not waited with bated breath for the next episode there's plenty of art of reactions if you haven't watched them yet to where if you're watching the backlogs or whatnot right right so <laughs> I wonder if there is anybody waiting with bated breath for the next Scar uh, Geek yeah. on Raw reaction. <laughs> As, hey, listen, man. Hey, I appreciate all the people, man. Community out there is really great, man. They give us good recommendations. And um, I appreciate that, man. I do. I appreciate them coming through, giving us recommendations, letting us know what they thought. I do. I appreciate that. So, yeah, looking forward to that. If you want some more, you can catch us out there. Scar does join us for those, though, man. We have a good time. So, um, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, I think we are done here. Thanks mm-hmm. everybody for watching and or listening. And <laughs> this is a podcast. You listen to us. Um and um catch you guys next time. Peace out to the Warriors, yo.